Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take you through my full process for creating clean, professional looking 3D floor plans. We're going to start in Revit and finish in Twinmotion. I'll take you through my entire process for it. A lot of people miss some things in Revit. I'm going to be going through that. And then I'm going to be ending the video with some lighting tips in Twinmotion that really make your images pop. So make sure you stick around. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in Revit. I know not everybody is using Revit, but this is what I use as an architect. And um, a lot of these tips that I'll go through are relevant to all softwares. So um, first, I have my floor plan right here. And the first thing that we need to do is draw a scope box. And I know Twinmotion has a section cube and I will get into why we don't want to use that right off the bat. Um, but as you can see, I have my full um, project here and there are specific units that we want to pick out so we can do a 3D floor plan for marketing. That's a really common thing. Um, and Twinmotion actually does a great job of doing 3D floor plans. You just need to do a little bit of tweaking on, on the Revit side and the Twinmotion side. So Revit, we're going to do some scope boxes. So I already have some of mine, but if you're not familiar with them, they cut out everything around it. And so we can just focus on a unit. So we're going to go to view and then scope box. And then basically you're just drawing a rectangle and then we'll set the height of it uh, in the properties panel. So I've already done this. You can kind of see the, the green outline is where the scope box is going to be cutting. So um, if you want it to cut something, uh, you, this scope box will show up. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna create one just so we have it. So I drew it here and there's a height and we can tweak the height, but uh, we'll do tutorial YouTube. And so this is a no man's land, I realize that, but in order to activate our scope box, we're gonna to go to scope box and then find that to our YouTube. And it'll cut out everything but the active scope box. So obviously there's nothing in it. So it's not gonna show anything. So if we go back to none and uncheck section box, that's how we get back to normal. So I'm gonna activate this one, which is E1201. And so this is the unit that we want to uh, punch out and put into twin motion. Um, a little tip, we want to cut right above the windows. You know, we want to go as low as we possibly can so we can get as much detail when we're going in our top down view. Um, so get as low as you possibly can. Definitely stay above the doors. I would suggest having some 3D open doors as well. I think that really adds uh, to just the real realism of it all. Um, but this is what we're gonna wanna export into Twinmotion. So we're gonna export this. I already have done it, but I'll show you. Just Twinmotion tab, export to Datasmith file. If you don't have this, uh, I think this started in 2023, the Twinmotion tab. Export to Datasmith file, and then we'll save it there. Um, so let's hop into Twinmotion, and I will show you why we don't want to use twin motion section cube for 3D floor plans. We want to, one thing I forgot to mention as I'm editing this, um, if your units are not perfectly rectangular and you want to have a clean cutout of them, a uh, tip that I would say is any wall that you don't want in Revit, um, I split the wall. So this was one full wall, but all I did was take my split tool and split it. And then that will separate the geometry in twin motion. Either we can hide it in Revit and export that, or we can just split it, keep it there, and then we can delete that in twin motion. Same with your floors. This floor obviously, you know, goes the entire distance of the building. And, um, you know, this was a staircase, so all I did was cut it out. So now this is a clean cutout. Okay, so here we are in Twin Motion. I have 
uh, imported two different models to show you why um, most people use the section cube and why it's a bad idea right off the bat. So I have imported the, the, sorry, this is a different unit, but I've imported the Revit um, file where we took our section box. And now uh, this is the way that other people have tried doing, and I've found that it just doesn't work well. So I have taken a section cube and uh, put it in, put it on one of these units. And a lot of people, they'll go to this section cube and they'll click invert. And then, you know, it can, you can kind of cut out what you need. Get it close. Change this to white, maybe lower the thickness. So the problem with the twin motion section cube is you don't have any thickness to your walls. And I'm not sure if this is just a Revit thing or, or if all softwares do that, but basically the section cube is mimicking the cuts. It doesn't know the, the thickness and it's kind of an optical illusion of thickness with the white border. So it does not work well at all. And it's not something I would recommend, but I will take you through a super critical tip you still want to use section cubes, just not this way. So let's back out of this. With the Revit export, you can see these are clean. Clean lines, you have wall thicknesses, everything. It looks great. I'm going to hop into this plan, which we have already seen in Revit and exported it into Twinmotion. So after applying all my materials, one of the biggest things that you have to remember with Twinmotion is we still want to use a section box. And the way that I'm using it right here is let's find it so right here i am cutting just ever so slightly a thin layer on top and the reason we do that is to hide the material differences from revit and see i have all this just gross uh, materials you know we have some black there we want to take that section cube and just ever so slightly cut the top and that just makes a clean image and obviously you can tweak colors if you want um, if you want it to pop out if you want it all black i've seen people do that um, but this just makes it just the best of both worlds you get revit's cut and then you get twin Mo twin motion section cube to finish it all off so a lot of people i have seen skip this step and i think it's crazy important um, so after that, you know, twin motion does all the work. You can fill your entire scene with what you want, make it as detailed as possible. I think people kind of forget to put details on things. It doesn't take that much longer, but it adds so much to just realism. And also if you want to do interiors, you've already got 90% of what you need there. So take your time fill everything. Okay, let's talk about lighting. Lighting in 3D floor plans is extremely important. Um, you want it to be readable. You want to see some shadows, but most importantly, you really just want to see the detail in the floor plan. A lot of people make them too shadowy and it causes issues. So I will show you what most people do and then I'll show you what I think you should do. So let's make another uh, image here. And it just takes a lot of playing around with the camera focal length and all that. Um, but lighting wise, you know, this looks okay. You, you get some dark shadows here and there and you've got a lot of bounce, bounce light going on. I path trace when I do all of these. So um, like this looks really clean. 3D floor plans, you don't want harsh shadows. They're really distracting and it's very, very hard to read. Um, so that is why we don't want to use Lumen. We want to use Path Tracer. Lumen has great shadows, but we don't want that. Um, another reason why in our ambience tab, 
we want to use the studio um, HDRI backdrop. Um, this essentially removes the directional light that causes those harsh, harsh shadows and just makes everything super consistent and clean. Um, that's why in all of these, you're not really seeing much light at all. You know, this directional light, it doesn't matter. It's nothing is getting produced at all, um, which is what we want. We want this image to be fairly flat. Um, now, if you want sunlight to pour into your, to your uh, windows like this, I have another tip for that. It's a little hokey, but it works. Um, what I do personally is find a window that is not facing towards your camera. So for instance, you know, this window and this window, and you just take a spotlight. You know, I usually um, color it sun colored and just point it right through there and make sure you turn on shadows. Um, you'll have to tweak the intensity a little bit, but it does a pretty good job of mimicking uh, sunlight through the windows. And I think it just adds a little bit of uh, artistic flair, I guess. Um, so I think that's a great, a great tip. But overall, stick with the studio light. Um, you'll have to work around exposure and stuff like that. I have some area lights here just kind of brightening up some areas. It doesn't do much, but it definitely removes some of those dark shadows in the corner. And sometimes these rooms get a little dark. Um, for instance, this, this bathroom would be really dark without the area light. And it just makes things a little bit more uh, consistent when we're rendering out these images. One thing I forgot to mention when you are building this out, make sure you have a starting ground that is white. Um, so if we go to our eyedropper tool, uh, we just have a white, um, clean ground, and that'll, that'll produce a nice image. When we go to export this out, we wanna make sure before we do that, that you click on your starting ground and you have a layer ID. I like to personally get rid of the background and mask it out. So when you're handing it to your client, it is a, is a opaque, transparent background. And so that they can place it on their website however they like. We don't really need this white background in our image. So we'll be able to cut out perfectly uh, on the 3D floor, floor plan. And I think it just creates a better look. So. All you have to do is export it and then we can start handing this to our clients. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and stick around for the next one.